Yellowstone volcano, why the USGS scientists may fear earthquake swarms could spark an eruption. This is by Callum Hoare on Express UK. It has to do with USGS and Yellowstone Volcano Observatory lectures having to do with the eruption volume and the capacity of Yellowstone as a supervolcano to have future activity. Yellowstone volcano scientists may fear an earthquake swarm could spark an eruption after a magnitude 3.1 quake was recorded earlier today, today being June 20th, 2019. Now we've had earthquake swarms as our friend and uh, the fledgling uh, um, geologist Ben Fiorullo comes up with updates, he just had one yesterday, having to do with the recent Yellow, uh, Yellowstone earthquake swarm. Not only in Yellowstone, but we had them in Long Valley Caldera as well, which is southwest of Yellowstone uh, on the coast in Southern California, well, mid-California actually. We've had an uptick of earthquake activity in Southern California to the point where geologists have come out stating that they expect a big one very soon because it's really long overdue. Now, as far as Yellowstone's concerned, yes, we've had a tremendous amount of changes in earthquake swarms, deformations, and even uh, hydrothermal activity. One of the areas is Norris Geyser Basin, Basin that houses the steamboat geyser that started erupting regularly almost every week, like clockwork, since last March. And next to Steamboat Geyser, also in the Norris Geyser Basin, is the Ledge Geyser, called Ledge because it's on a ledge of a hill, and it's really noisy because it has a very small aperture opening for the water to come out, and it whistles and uh, buzzes uh, very loudly. You can't even hear each other talk to each other when you're standing close, so you have to scream. It's a very noisy geyser. So Yellowstone Supervolcano, located between Yellowstone National Park, which is, as we know, in the western United States, sitting on the edge of Wyoming, bordering Montana and Idaho. It's constantly being monitored by the United States Geological Survey and Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, which was recently established there just in 2001. And uh, it's being monitored due to its capacity to inflict disaster on a worldwide scale if a super eruption occurs. Now there have been many other eruptions that were smaller than the super eruption. One was like 70,000 years ago and they've had another 80 eruptions since then. The last ever event of this kind of a super eruption has not happened for more than 630,000 years and a serious eruption did take place 70,000 years ago which reportedly makes another super eruption overdue. Now, earlier today, we had a magnitude one, a 3.1 earthquake recorded in Manhattan, Montana, only 100 miles from the Yellowstone supervolcano. Now, okay, they're talking about this 3.1 magnitude, but they still have not said anything about the Montana earthquake of the 5 that was downgraded to 4.4, and that was uh, in the beginning of uh, mid, mid beginning to mid, mid April. They didn't touch that with a ten foot pole, and that hadn't happened happened until, uh, until uh, well thirty five years previously, and that was a four point three magnitude, and they were very flustered at that because they didn't know what that meant, and this one was a four point four bam, and no reference to it whatsoever in the Caldera Chronicles, nothing. So Montana, northwest of the lake, Yellowstone Lake, has been buzzing with uh, earthquake swarms. And uh, it's also around the area where a new thermal, uh, 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 thermal area has been found. And uh, they're up there uh, now that, as of May 1st, there are geological field trips that start taking place. Even though at that time, in the beginning of May, they had four feet of snow, they still have about two and a half feet of snow in various uh, high mountain areas there. So it's still making their uh, monitoring, uh, placing monitoring equipment and uh, trekking through these areas which have no paths and no roads near them, very difficult. 
So hopefully they'll come back with the news on that new thermal area that they've seen by infrared satellite. What is it? Is it a hot spot? Is it uh, a new geyser area? Is it new fumaroles? Is it mud pots? What is it exactly? Now, though the tremors, the earthquakes were small, they said that they still uh, are of interest to scientists due to the high possibility of a swarm which can see hundreds of smaller earthquakes in a short period of time. In the USGS website states that since 1973, there have been over 48,000 earthquakes located in the Ulster region. Over 99% of these earthquakes are magnitude 2 or below and are not felt by anyone. Now I know that there are a lot of people uh, that live in the area in that area that watch this my channel and they say that you know it's fear mongering they don't feel the earthquake okay because they're so small they're small if they're smaller than 3.5 you probably won't feel it but they do have their seismic monitors that can feel the change of a, a split hair that's if the earth moves a split hair I mean they'll feel that and they will record that so they do uh, record these tremors most of them as I said 99% of them are magnitude 2 or lower. Now the earthquake swarms, earthquakes that cluster in time and space are called swarms. They account for about 50% of the total seismicity of Yellowstone and they can occur anywhere in the Yellowstone region but they are most common in the east-west band of seismicity between Hebgen Lake and the Norris Geyser Basin. Now we know that Hebgen Lake had the 1959 7.3 magnitude earthquake and that was uh, the quake that is still causing the aftershocks that geologists say we're feeling now. So Hebbingen Lake is still having these earthquake swarms. Most swarms are small containing 10 to 20 earthquakes and short lasting one to two days. However large swarms that can contain thousands of earthquakes and that can last for months, do occur on occasion. Can you imagine? Quakes lasting for months. Quake swarms, they, I, would, I would believe they would mean. Earthquake swarms pose a threat as they can trigger a volcanic eruption. Those scientists are unsure exactly how. Well, it means because if, if, if the thing is shaking, that something is causing the shaking. What is causing the shaking? Something bubbling from underneath is pressuring it, trying to get out. Or perhaps something very deep inside is moving like a river, and that's what's causing the shaking. In any event, that's not good. As, besides the deformation here in this area, you also have gas emissions, and you also have the quake swarm. These are all signs of impending um, eruption. And there's also a fourth sign, the fact that you have an increased gravity indication, which means that there's more magma underneath, closer to the surface. All right, so um, now they uh, we've also been told by um, the USGS in the past, concerning the Yellowstone Lake, which is right on top of the roof of the magma chamber, Yellowstone Lake is pretty big, beautiful, if you see pictures of it, beautiful pristine areas. Um, now, uh, those, that, those waters on the lake when the wind blows, of course, they have waves. And the geologists say that even the waves over the lake are dangerous in that they could create an earthquake. Waves causing earthquakes in Yellowstone. And it's dangerous because this lake, of course, is situated right on top of the roof of the magma chamber, which lies below. And in the general area of Yellowstone, you have hot magma three miles right under your feet. Now, uh, they believe that the volcanic activity to a change in the local pressure surrounding the magma reservoir system. And it's a consequence of severe ground shaking caused by the earthquake. Of course, whenever you have deformation, of course you're going to have earthquakes. There, are, there was a brief period of anxiety. Scientists had in 2018 when rapid fire swarms occurred, and they're still occurring. We just had a, a video a couple of hours ago, ago showing the rapid fire swarm in Yellowstone. Uh, this uh, and also a, a Long Valley caldera, the other 
supervolcano in California. So the, this features earthquake swarms that appear out of nowhere that can churn out tens or hundreds of small to moderate earthquakes in a very short time frame. July 5th, 2018, last year, there was approximately 160 earthquakes of all sizes, with only 12 of them being felt. But the most nervous of times came 10 years earlier. It was December 2008, continuing into January 2009, when they had more than 500 earthquakes that were detected under the northwest end of Yellowstone Lake over a seven-day span, with the largest registering a magnitude 3.9. So you can imagine, that's terrible. Um, again, that this is the area that we are seeing most active now with earthquake swarms. And that's exactly where the big quake was that was downgraded to 4.4, the northwest region uh, of Yellowstone towards Montana, in Montana. Jacob Lowenstein, I don't know why they say Lowenstein, other times they write Lowenstern. I wish I uh, they would be consistent. I don't know what his exact name is. I've seen it 50% being Lowenstein and another 50% being Lowenstern. So Jacob Lowenstein, who was take, tasked with monitoring, monitoring the activity of USGS, revealed during his lecture at Menlo Park, California, how his team of geologists was put on alert. He explained how they spotted a linear trend of earthquakes heading towards the Yellowstone caldera. So they spotted a trend of earthquakes heading to the caldera. He said in 2014, here are a couple of maps show you what was happening during that period of time. It turns out that the earthquakes were on a linear trend. It started with the blue, which are the early earthquakes, and then the red, which are the latest. They started at the south and they slowly, slowly moved northward. This is another one of the cross sections, he says. Though Mr. Lowenstein was confident that earthquake activity would not be enough to spark a volcanic eruption, he did admit that it was really unsettling. He added, this was a pretty nervous time for us, not because there was a lot of earthquakes, but because people were getting rather agitated about things happening beneath the lakes. Lakes freak people out for some reason because they can't see what is happening underneath. But people just hypothesized all sorts of crazy stuff. That was a very uh, nervous time. There was a lot of earthquakes, but there was never any steam or anything more than small earthquakes. Now, uh, they did find, though, that they had some uh, fumaroles and uh, outlets uh, in underneath the, um, in, in the uh, uh, Yellowstone Lake area. This was one of their recent Caldera Chronicle updates that there are little tiny fumaroles. You see them even in uh, Greece, in the volcanic islands, for one of them being Nisiros, that you go swimming in the sea, and the sea is chilly, the water is nice and cool, and then you have these air bubbles coming out from underneath your feet, and they're little tiny fumaroles, like, like miniature volcanoes, <laughs> under your feet, and there's this bubbling hot water coming out. And you say, oh, how great, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm swimming over the magma of this volcano, which happens to have you know, the Mediterranean Sea swirling around it. So, yeah, uh, even the lake, of course. Uh, you could have steam coming out of the water of the lake. As you have hot water coming into uh, the ocean, for example, of the Aegean Sea, that has volcanoes around it, one of them being Nisiros, um, which is uh, south of, uh, well, is it south? I think it's just north of Santorini, or just about there anyway. Okay. So I'll leave links below for you for this on Express UK. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. 
more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.